Hello again, everybody. It's Todd Stroots, the horror nerd here at Eternal Con on Long Island. We are having a blast this weekend. We're having a great time here. There's a ton of fans here, a ton of things going on. I have the pleasure of sitting here with Father Gabriel, Father Gabriel himself from The Walking Dead, Seth Gilliam. Seth, how are you? I'm great, thanks. Good to see you again. You too. Yeah, yeah. it's been a few years since, has we, been. since we first met. Yeah. How's life been treating you since then? Life has been good. Life has been good. We wrapped up uh, uh, the end of, uh, of the show, The Walking Dead, and we got some spinoffs in the works and uh, got some closure on some storylines and mm. some character development and arcs. It was a good couple of years. Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I follow the, the show closely beginning to end. And, mm -hmm. and your character arc is one that I really enjoy because it was very redemptive. Yes. So how did you feel about how your character was handled? I was very excited with the way uh, things uh, ended up for Father Gabriel. I, I felt like it uh, came full circle. Um, he was on this kind of journey to kind of erase this horrible mistake he had made at the beginning of the fall of society and uh, and once they'd found the you know the ways to rebuild society again he was able to atone for that and make up for it it was a great journey all the way through all, all seven seasons I was on the show mm. what I found very interesting was how Father Gabriel even as a man of faith found himself able to do some things that maybe were a little uh, ethically uh, gray for the betterment of the community and for his friends. Yes, so uh, you know, I, I enjoyed that conflict. Yeah, me too. It's kind of like that uh, that Marine saying of adapt and overcome. Mm -hmm. You know, he adapted to the world, to what the world had become, and uh, and and overcame some serious threats to the community and the people that he vowed to try to protect this time around. Mm. I so I imagine that you know being on the show for seven seasons, it was such a it's it is such a huge pop culture phenomenon. Must have been bittersweet for it to to come to an end. It was, you know, it's the it's like the end of a of a relationship that you're in, you know. But uh, you know, all things have to come to an end, and it depends on what you got out of it and what you take with you from it. You know, and uh, I got a lot of joy out of it, and uh, I got some great relationships and friends from it. So, you know, it's uh, as the days pass by, it's become less bitter and more sweet. Fantastic, fantastic. So, um, it, you didn't. It wasn't all that long ago that you rapped. What have you been up to uh, since Walking Dead? Um, I, don't I, 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 I've done four movies since the end of The Walking Dead. One of them has come out. The Teen Wolf movie came out, I think, in November on, uh, uh, I think it was Paramount Plus. Um, uh, the, other, the other three uh, are looking for theatrical releases. Um, they're in the final stages of editing now, and then it's about trying to find a distributor and see whether or not you're gonna wind up in the actual movie theaters or on a streaming platform on TV. Fantastic, busy is good. Busy is good. <laughs> Now, obviously, we've got the writer strike, so things are yes. kind of on hold, but uh, hopefully things pick up I, soon. I hope things pick up soon. I hope people, you know, in the position of power recognize the absolute need for the creative idea, for the genesis of the story, um, the words and, you know, the structure and everything else that uh, only writers can provide. You know, we're all p different parts of the same machine, you know, and without the battery, the car doesn't go. You know, without gas, the car doesn't go. And without, you know, hydraulic steering, you can't, you know, direct the car. So, you know, we all play a, a vital role in, um, in entertaining the world. Mm. So uh, I hope that uh, recognition is paid and, uh, you know, and uh, that uh, greed and hoarding stops. I got you. My dad's a mechanic. I appreciate a good car analogy. Like, I, really, I, I really do. He, yeah. I'm going to show him this. He's going to be like, I get, I get that. I get it. Yes. I, I get it. So, so one final question: um, Has it, does it ever surprise you the fact that this, The Walking Dead, is not just a TV show per se, mm -hmm. but really became part of our, our pop culture in this country? Does that surprise you at all? And now fans continue to line up I, to meet you and, yeah, and talk about the yeah. show. It, it, it doesn't surprise me because I came on the show in the uh, pardon me in the uh, uh, during the fifth season, so it was already like a worldwide phenomenon at that part 
at that point, I've, it was kind of like jumping on a, a moving train, you know, and, and trying to keep your grip on it uh, while it tears off into the, the distance. So um, I could kind of see that it was that it had entrenched itself in the, the pop culture fabric of, uh, of the viewing world uh, by, by the time I came on it. Um, so I'm not surprised by it. Um, I've been more surprised by the success of other things that are nowhere near as layered, intricate, dynamic, scary, and human as The Walking Dead. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Seth, thank you so much for a few minutes sure, of man. your time. You. It was great to see you again. To see you again. Yes. Uh, I wish you success in anything you have uh, coming up and thank those, you. those projects that you mentioned. Any final words you'd like to share uh, with the fans out there before we wrap it up? Uh, It'll all work out in the end, and uh, if it hasn't worked out, it's not the end. I like it. Words of wisdom, everybody, from <laughs> Seth Gilliam. I am Todd Staruch, the horror nerd here at Eternal Con, signing off. We will see all of you in the next interview.